Good afternoon, everyone. This is T3 Live Editor-in-Chief John Darcy here to bring you the daily recap. So the market was able to find its footing today. Uh, yesterday afternoon, we were able to, to bounce off the lows. Uh, we did get a, a bearish close yesterday after the bounce, which uh, led to another down day. But then today, despite weak Apple earnings last night, we were able to open slightly higher and build on that during the session. You go ahead and take a look at the chart of the spiders. Uh, like I said, yesterday, uh, we got a lot of downside follow through, some more fear coming into the market, but we're able to stage a really impressive bounce to even go positive uh, for a little while until in the last 20, 30 minutes of the session, we faded again to give us a, a bearish close. Uh, but then, like I said, after the close yesterday, Apple reported earnings. People thought that might weigh on the market again, but instead we were able to shrug that off, open slightly higher this morning, and then as you can see, erase most of those losses from yesterday uh, that came in the afternoon. But overall, the bounce back in the indices, or in the, in the spiders in particular, were not terribly impressive, but what you did see was some really impressive bounce back in individual stocks, getting back to that theme that we uh, have talked about to start this year of a lot of divergences, a lot of stock-specific uh, relative strength type action out there. And uh, during earnings season, that's not, uh, it's not rare to see something like that, where obviously a company that reports strong earnings and, and uh, how it treats its gap after earnings, whether it's a gap down or gap up, is going to determine its short-term composure and even its intermediate-term composure uh, through the next few months. Uh, but uh, one of the focuses today, obviously, was Apple after earnings last night. Apple came out with what was really a, a not very good report. And then what people were really concerned about was the, the bearish guidance. They lowered their guidance for the next quarter. Uh, and, and overall, people are just seeing a company that, yes, they've innovated for a long time and, and they have great products and people continue to buy them, but growth has slowed tremendously and, and they're not coming out with anything new, any new revenue streams that are really uh, helping maintain that growth trajectory. That being said, as Scott would say, uh, I, I do think it's a tremendous value at its current price level, but you might have to be patient because the technical landscape is a little bit broken. Taking a look at the chart of Apple here, as you can see yesterday, it just gradually continued to sell off after hours yesterday as more details started to come out about the report. Uh, then the conference call, Steve, uh, Steve Jobs had much more of a penchant for uh, being able to speak well uh, as opposed to Tim Cook. You know, everyone has an opinion on how good of a CEO Tim Cook is and how he's terrible and this and that. Uh, you know, I think much too much gets made of Tim Cook's role in all of this. I think this is an inevitable stage for Apple right now uh, where they need to either come out with new products or reinvent themselves a little bit uh, if they're going to get that big boost. But uh, Carl Icahn is continuing to buy up shares today. He tweeted again that he bought $500 million more of Apple stock. So uh, there are people that still do believe in Apple, but today it wasn't able to get much of a bounce despite the big gap down and finished the day down more than 8%. You know, it's now down below all of its short-term moving averages. The 200 day is still there uh, for it to contend with, but breaking some major support levels here. Uh, you zoom out even more on the chart of Apple. The next real level to watch is maybe around the 495, 500 area. Uh, we almost tested that today, but like I said, the technical picture right now on a short-term basis is somewhat broken. But if we do get more downside action, I think you're going to see a lot of value investors come in and be looking to accumulate this thing. And I think the, the next biggest opportunity, getting away from the technicals a little bit for Apple, is not a smart watch or a TV. Those are things that, uh, compared to the revenue they generate from their iPhone uh, and even iPad is, is a secondary revenue stream for them, uh, those new products I don't think are going to even make a dent in, in the size of the earnings that the smartphone market uh, gives Apple. I think one of the biggest opportunities for them is mobile payments. We've talked about that theme. We talked about it in Scott's 2014 predictions about how the idea of mobile payments is going to get a lot of interest this year. Uh, there's a company, a London-listed company called Monetize that I really like uh, that I first talked about at the beginning of last year. I was at the SALT conference in Vegas, and Leon Cooperman of Omega Advisors talked about uh, how he loved Monetize as maybe a home run type bet in the market. It more than doubled last year. Uh, and has got, gotten off to a, a decent start to this year. It's pulled back a little bit with uh, world markets. But uh, mobile payments, Apple with their iTunes store and every, all the infrastructure they have in place for that stands to be one of the companies that could really uh, seize a lot of the opportunity in that mobile payment space. So I think that's the type of news to look out for in Apple more so than smart watches and TV set-top boxes and things like that. Um, but another focus today was Netflix. Netflix, another stock that recently reported earnings. And... I'll just go ahead and take a look at the chart as I talk about it. Sort of a technical lesson that, you know, if you follow us, you've probably seen this type of lesson before. But what we love to see around earnings season and, you know, after a news event or something like that in a stock is you like to see a gap up and you like to see commitment to that gap. So you like to see the gap uh, take place, hold higher 
uh, away from the gap. Yes, it tried to enter it a little bit uh, yesterday, but overall been showing a lot of relative strength to the market uh, during the recent turmoil. And then after three days of digestion, allowed the eight-day moving average to play a little bit of catch-up. And then today, when the market found its footing, uh, it was sort of a slingshot effect for Netflix after showing that relative strength uh, over the past few sessions after earnings. So really nice percentage move there, and that was a big focus on the virtual trading floor. Uh, well done by uh, the, the community calling that out and, and identifying the relative strength there. Uh, another name that I think was a little bit of a focus for traders the last couple of days, when you have a market uh, pulling in sharply, there's, there's certain stocks that during the bullish action that we've seen over the last few months haven't allowed you a way in. There's stocks that people want to own, they're looking for a pullback to buy, they're looking for a base, and it just hasn't really formed. And then when you get market turmoil like this and stocks are selling off sharply and the, the bullets are flying, proverbially, uh, prever whatever that word is, um, people don't put their money where their mouth is in terms of, this is a stock I want to buy on a dip. You got your dip, why aren't you buying? I think uh, human emotions and fear and things like that uh, come into play. And the stock specifically that I'm talking about is Google, is one example at least. Take a look at Google. Uh, like I said, Google has just not been allowing you a way into the trade. It's been riding its eight-day moving average mainly, a couple tests of the 21-day over the past few months. But besides that, it's just been trending higher and running away from you if there's something you want to be involved in. And what you saw the last two days was really sharp uh, downside action, tested its 50-day moving average, more weakness than we've seen from Google uh, you know, in, in almost six months pretty much. Uh, but if you wanted to be involved in Google, you got to be ready and armed to be able to buy that dip. And what you saw was a really quick snapback yesterday. It paired half of its gains into yesterday's close. And then today you got a gap up and it reclaimed the rest of yesterday's losses. I still think even at this level, if you think the market's going higher, uh, Google should be one that you look to buy because it's a market leader. Uh, and, and it's still only just reclaimed yesterday's losses, still has all of uh, the losses from the previous day. So it's just an example of make a shopping list when the market's weak, when there's turmoil, and have a level head and be able to buy. If you think the market's going lower uh, over the longer term, maybe you have a little bit different perspective depending on your time frame, but just an example there. And Amazon's a similar type example. One been one of the stocks leading the market, two-day correction, uh, but closed well off its lows yesterday and then continued higher today, back up into its 21-day. Uh, and then I think another focus for a lot of people, it was mentioned very heavily on the virtual trading floor today, was Tesla. Another stock that's been very strong over the past few weeks. You have the market pulling in, the focus becomes more on the macro, the, the baby gets thrown out with the bathwater, and I think that's what you saw with Tesla. Had a sharp pull in, but yesterday closed well off its lows, uh, like the market did, like a lot of stocks did. And then today, opened just slightly positive, but then gave you great momentum during the session to finish up uh, almost 5% for Tesla. So really nice action there. Uh, looks like it might want to challenge this pivot high if the market uh, doesn't fall apart again, uh, like we saw earlier in the week, or late last week as well. Uh, 182.39 is the pivot to watch there. I think it's just a matter of time before you see Tesla back at highs. Uh, I think it'll continue to squeeze the 20 to 30 percent short interest that's still involved in that stock. And not only tech uh, bounced back strong today, even though the queues were actually relatively weak because of uh, the Apple weakness, but uh, a lot of other stocks in different sectors bounce back well also. And one of the sectors we talked about being strong, we mentioned in Scott's 2014 predictions and we've mentioned it in videos and things like that, is the casinos. Just like Google, just like Amazon have been extremely strong, not letting you, uh, giving you a way in, uh, the casinos have been the same way. Especially MGM was the name we mentioned in Scott's 2014 predictions. Uh, but yesterday, this was one that actually was able to get back uh, almost to positive territory and pair more losses than the market and even a lot of other stocks. It, it was almost a red dog reversal. Didn't quite make it there, I don't think, uh, in terms of closing back above the previous day's low. But uh, today you got nice upside follow through in the morning. It did close off its highs a little bit, so this is one that's a, a little bit wishy-washy or a little bit uh, indecisive at this point, closing off of its lows yesterday, off of its highs today. But overall, it's been an extremely strong stock over the past couple months. I think if the market is able to hold in, I think this is one of the ones that you could potentially turn to uh, to get a short-term type bounce. And then just take a peek at LVS, similar type story. It wasn't as strong uh, in terms of its bounce back yesterday, but showed more commitment to the upside today. And then win another one that bounced back nicely in the casino group. Social media stocks, they, they do fall under the umbrella of tech, but uh, we sort of separate those out. Those were extremely strong today, even stronger than uh, some of the high beta tech names. And I'll just run through those quickly. Twitter got hit really hard yesterday. Uh, maybe people a little bit nervous about earnings, broke lower out of that wedge pattern. The thing about a wedge pattern uh, is that 
it can break either way and you can you can have a neutral stance when a wedge pattern is formed you don't have to have a long or short side bias I think a lot of people had a long side bias on this uh, wedge pattern because the inbound move here for Twitter was uh, bullish but you can put a short entry trigger at the lower end of the wedge pattern you could put a buy entry trigger on the top end of the wedge pattern you, like I said you can be neutral and yesterday you got a big time momentum breakdown the stock finished down uh, seven or so percent I believe yesterday but then today it was able to bounce back up into its 8 and 21 day moving average so uh, like I said earnings coming up uh, next Wednesday I believe it's the first earnings report since uh, Twitter has become public so I think uh, there's just a lot of question marks the company's in a hyper growth phase uh, have they realized some of their earnings potential already or are they going to fall short and maybe uh, trigger some downside no one knows and if they do they're doing something illegal but anyways uh, I think just a lot of indecisive action is what you'll see in Twitter leading up to that earnings report but then Facebook also bounced back really well today if I can get the chart up not my line tool cancel that Facebook yesterday closed well off its lows like a lot of stocks continue to the upside today uh, we'll want to see it climb back above its 8 and 21 day moving average uh, if it's going to really regain composure the chart looks a little bit broken after yesterday it uh, pierced down through some important support but if it can build on today's action and get back above the 8 and 21 day maybe it could uh, repair itself a little bit uh, the day to take notice here was this breakout failure that you got after that Princeton report said that they could lose 80 percent of their users by 2017 uh, they pretty much aligned Facebook with being an epidemic or some sort of disease that uh, spreads very rapidly and then uh, fades almost to extinction uh, almost as quickly so uh, that was a, a little bit of an erroneous report I think but uh, led to some some downside and led to that breakout failure in part uh, but the action over the next few days will be very important in Facebook uh, then LinkedIn was very weak yesterday closed on its lows whereas a lot of stocks were able to bounce off their lows so that wasn't very bullish action there for LinkedIn today came back up to retest the 200 day but this is one uh, that I'm not quite as bullish on uh, as some of the others given the action that we've seen over the last few months maybe a retest of this 200 day is an area to short on LinkedIn uh, if that's the frame of mind you have right now and then stock like Zillow extremely impressive today not exactly social media but one of these new media recent IPO names huge bounce uh, didn't quite get down to its 200 day yesterday but uh, bounced back really impressively today and then Yelp another one a really nice bounce back um, then the banks were also somewhat strong today this has been a weak area to start the year and I, I think that if you are one of those that right now is looking for a bounce to short which I think people are thinking about a little bit more uh, with a little bit more credibility now than they have at any point over the last few months uh, I think the banks are a potential area to watch but I think you're seeing a lot of divergences within the sector uh, where Bank of America I'll go ahead and take a look at that chart is clearly the best uh, in breed among the banks right now in my opinion back above its eight day today you know back above its 21 day as well after breaking down below it yesterday but it closed well off its lows yesterday and, and looked like a maybe a, a candlestick that would show a little bit of a reversal even though it wasn't able to complete the red dog reversal like I said really nice action today but then you look at a stock like Citigroup below its 200 day Goldman Sachs very weak coming near its 200 day below its 100 day uh, JP Morgan down to its 100 days so like I said Bank of America clearly the best in breed there but if you're looking for areas to short a bounce potentially I think the banks could be a decent candidate after what was a lackluster earnings season and then also uh, 3D printers bounced back the last day and a half or so uh, you had a, there was some sort of partnership deal that got announced yesterday in Stratasys after it got hit really hard that led to the big bounce big time bottoming uh, candlestick yesterday and then some upside follow through today DDD was able to bounce back a little bit but not uh, quite as strong as something like SSYS which seems to have emerged as the leader for now in the 3D printing sector overall I think the 3D printing sector when you get this magnitude of a sell-off the sector and the, and the technicals in the sector are, are somewhat broken Stratus is holding up okay but overall I think this is a short-term trading vehicle only maybe they could bounce back but I think uh, there's better risk reward opportunities right now I think this is a very risky sector to be involved with and then uh, solar names uh, the the best in breed solar names bounced back really well today as well solar city came back retested at 21 day that's another one that uh, maybe you're kicking yourself for not being involved on the initial breakout if that's the case have a list of those stocks that you want to be involved with and, and look to buy them on a retest and that's what you got in solar city that uh, was a retest of this generally of this prior breakout area 
uh, back into the 21 day and then really nice uh, bounce and commitment to highs today, closing on its highs of the day. And then CSIQ, same way. This has also been uh, one of the stronger solar names yesterday. Uh, came into its 21 day and then opened, uh, opened below its 21 day yesterday, but then uh, was able to rally back above it. Uh, and then today, nice gap and go, follow through to the upside to get back above the eight day. So really nice strength there. Uh, overall, right now, I think the magnitude of the sell-off uh, Monday and Friday is sort of has people a little bit concerned and maybe taking a little bit a different frame of mind in regards to how to play uh, this bounce. I think when you get the magnitude of selling like we saw on those two days, it gets people with a little bit more short on the brain and maybe looking for select spots to short rallies like I talked about as I went over a few stocks. I think uh, right now I think it's an appealing environment for traders when you can bounce your book a little bit, have a few shorts, have a few longs, uh, not be so beholden to what's going on in the S&P. Uh, but we are in the middle of earnings season. This is the heaviest earnings week of earnings season. So it's sort of hard to sink your teeth into any type of swing trades. I think uh, you, know, you have a lot of big tech earnings later this week. You have the Fed tomorrow coming out with their rate decision. Will some of the turmoil in the market lead them to maybe postpone uh, the next taper of QE? I don't think so, uh, but you never know what could happen with them. And just overall, I think right now is a time to be very short term and tactical. Let's see how these uh, last few days of price action uh, end up playing out. You don't have to be involved in every move in the market, every move in stocks. Wait for uh, those moments when there is a little bit more clarity, there is a little bit uh, easier way to measure your entries and your stops and stuff like that. Right now, this is a, a short term sniper type environment. Uh, maybe wait till, like I said, we get a little bit more clarity, a little bit more sideways action uh, before taking uh, maybe swing type bets. Uh, anyways, this has been John Darcy here for your daily recap. Scott and Brittany will be back here tomorrow morning for the morning call.